What's up, listeners? This is F. Molina, and I got a few special people with us today. I got El Jefe. That's right. And we are joined by our special co-host, Sarah Stapleton. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm good. It's bright and early, drinking my coffee, so I'm good to go. And we are also joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Pepe Serna. Now, for those of you who don't know who Mr. Serna is, first of all, you should go out and get beaten if you don't know who he is. But Mr. Serna has spent over 30 years making movies and growing up. Um, that's that's uh, uh, 57 years. Mr. Serna, I, I was trying not to age you. Hey, hey. <laughs> Look at me, I don't age. <laughs> <laughs> but, but right now, uh, Mr. Serena, you are in the Amazon Prime show With Love, right? Correct. And that show is basically about a bunch of um, young adults who are trying to basically find love, right? Yeah, find, find love um, and, and uh, celebrating the, the, uh, the Mexican holidays. And what character do you play? Okay, I'm, I, I play El Abuelo, the, the patriarch of the family. And along with my, my uh, Renee Victor, who plays my wife, the matriarch. And, and, it's, and she's originally from San Antonio. And, and she is fabulous. And this show, the main thing about this show that is really starting to take hold is that the showrunner, the person who produces and writes and, and created this show is Gloria Calderon Kellett. And she just got uh, n uh, nominated as one of the top 100 women in Hollywood. Wow. And, and that's one of the, the, my, I was born a feminist uh, because I had so many incredible aunts and, and women in my life. So, uh, just to let uh, the, the macho world of Texas know that uh, we need women in charge because they, they can do so many more things than we can. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, they give life. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, that's uh, what and, I mean. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Sedna, well, we, we're to the present is with love, but your, your cinema um, history most people will remember you from that chainsaw scene in Scarface, right? Yeah, that's right. That's the most memorable scene. And um, <laughs> and you were in cinema at a time when 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 I would turn on the TV and there weren't very many Hispanics on TV, and you were one of the few. Um, Hispanics that we would see on TV and on films. And I remember I got so excited watching you in a cult hit called Buckaroo Banzai. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, whoa, there is a, a Hispanic in space. I'm like, that's so cool. Can you tell us a, a little bit how you got started? Well, uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, uh, the adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. The, the writer is uh, Earl Mac Rauch, and he's a Tejano, but he, he, he spoke Spanish since he was a kid. So in, in college, he would join all the, 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 he would join the Chicano club and dye his hair uh, 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 black so that he could pass as a Chicano because he said he's a great guy. But, but, um, and he's still in, he's back in Texas. He's been in Texas for quite a while. But how I got started was, um, you know, I, I, I came out, uh, you know, into this world uh, performing. I don't remember when I wasn't performing, but at three years of age, I jumped up on my godfather's boxing ring and, and was watching them spar. And then I pretended to, to like I was sparring and then, I accidentally knocked myself out on purpose and everybody started laughing. So of course I tried it again, but it doesn't work twice in a row. You have to come up with a new joke, <laughs> you know? 
that was when I realized that you have to be uh, um, you have to be authentic and you have to be uh, original. And and so anything I ever did my whole life was uh, performing. I I always uh, loved uh, being on and being uh, supported by family, and uh, which is which is the main the main thing why uh, my documentary and my memoir that will be coming out speaks to is that we have to support each other in, in, in the things that we do, because I was with my family always supported every, everything I did. They didn't laugh at me. They laughed with me and they never, I don't remember anybody in my family saying, Oh, you're, you're crazy. You're not going to go to Hollywood. I knew I was coming to Hollywood since, since I can remember. And, and that's, that's my mantra is that kind of support family support. And, uh, when you, you know, you go back to Adam and Eve and we're all related. So it's, we're all family. So we got to get the, the best one in our family to put out there in front to, uh, hack away the, in the jungle to make the path for the rest of us. And speaking of that. family, <laughs> speaking of family, Sarah, you're related yes, to no, Mr. I'm Sedner, so, right? I'm yeah, we're we are related, and I'm so proud to have. Um, I'm so proud to to know you and have you part of my life. And it's what's really incredible to me is not only are you this this you know very skilled actor and the storyteller, but what you're doing that sets you apart. I think from from a lot of other in your industry is you're really hitting upon these issues that matter. I mean, it's not about you. It's about telling the story of others and hitting on these issues that are everyday issues that are really shaping um, our country right now. And you're bringing light um, to the underrepresented. You're bringing light to, to these people whose voices may be hindered. And to me, um, there's nothing more respectable than that. And I'm, I'm extremely honored and pleased um, to have you here with me. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be, to be here. And that's th really important that I, I have done that my whole career and you will see it in my documentary that, that I hope to bring down to uh, South Texas at uh, raising money to promote it because that, that's that's the name of the game for everything is why the studios they make a, a 200 million dollar movie they have another 200 million dollars to promote it you know and that's that's why they say why do we go to the movies and everybody says, well, uh, to eat popcorn, you know, to, to be entertained. No, the reason we go to the movies is because somebody tells us to. The reason that, that we vote is because somebody is telling us to go vote. And, and that doesn't come, that doesn't come, uh, uh, it, it's not a free ride. You have to have support behind you. And that's what I, I know this isn't, uh, I don't know what this is, but I know about about that part of promotion for anything Mr. that we Senna, do. I mean, Sarah case. is running for political office and yourself, though, you, you you've been an advocate as well, right? Not only an actor, but but you've also um, advocated for for numerous causes. I came across one of your letters, I think, that you wrote was it to congress or yeah. or to the president what it was co a congressional it's in, in the congressional records uh, of uh of having latinos on on uh in the media in tv on on uh in the movies and and uh yeah that it, it was great where we were a part of uh uh my my best friend in the business edward james Olmos and myself and, and a few others that that were part of this uh, group to let uh, Congress know that, hey, we need we need your support. We need you to go knocking on Hollywood's doors and say, hey, enough already. Um, you know, it's an interesting thing, especially with Mexicanos. They say, you know, there are so many African-American shows. Why are there why aren't there Mexican-American shows? Why aren't they Latino? And we say, hey, the African Americans supported each other in films and their TV, and, and and they backed each other, and they got to where they are because they pulled together 
as as a group and and that's what we need to do we need to 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 support our films and and everything that we do you know our businesses uh family all, all of that yeah and and another big thing that i'm i'm a big part of is uh, uh that is big obviously in 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 the valle down there is the farm worker justice do you know that that the 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 farm worker the children from the farm workers are the only ones that are not protected by child labor laws they can go into the fields i think at 11 and 12 years old and and there are many deaths uh that happen with children in the fields so we need advocates like like Sarah that are going to fight you know uh not only for the people that are the 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 big money people that put the money behind you know that person you know and and that's where the lobbyists come in and and they're promoting you know all the stuff that that uh that why were the uh, global warming all the things that are going on now is because the big money is behind it and and they don't want it to go away I think you hit the nail on the head but but I mean, we have so many politicians right and we, they are public servants and that's what they forget is they get in the office and they find these loopholes and they make multi millions of dollars off of private prisons and off these industries that are really just harming harming the everyday folk down here in 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 the valley and um yeah you're right it's time to have someone that'll advocate for the normal day person for the for the child in the field or you know just for the the teacher next door and um and i love that you're that you've been recognizing that for all these years and i love that you've really paved the way for some of us behind you for so many of us behind you you know sort of following in your path and and trying to make a difference you know uh, uh you mentioned that 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 we're related and it makes me go back to to uh, your husband Ricardo's uh grandmother who was my aunt who was an icon in education in South Texas i mean she was the first mexican american woman to have her uh master's degree and teach and going to the little ranchitos and helping you know going on an an uh, horse and carriage i mean uh sometimes you know to go and make sure that these kids and the little ranchitos had had a voice and and could hear their own voice and that's what we need that's what we need uh, still need even more so today than ever i mean we have uh, somehow it's the hub a good friend of mine uh, valente rodriguez that was on the george lopez show i think he originally he's from he was from donna and oh, wow. and valente was in all 48 states by the time he was 18 years of age he had traveled to all 48 states working with his family as as a farm worker can you believe that in all 48 in, in the before obviously hawaii and alaska uh, he didn't go to but but uh, but yeah he he uh there's so much uh and they they're still the ones that are treated the the worst they, I mean only in in the 60s that they have to fight and 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 get uh, uh bathrooms in the fields. I mean what they're the ones who feed us. And 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 I just don't understand how anybody who eats and 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 goes to uh to church or whatever service that they go to and and pray and and, and be holier than now and not know that hey the, the downtrodden are the ones that we have to help they they are us we're all each other we have to we can't you know hoard i mean why is it that the what is it that i don't, I don't even know the numbers you you would know better than i do but the the one percenters that make you know 80% of the money and don't pay the taxes that that, that we pay Yeah. Anyway, that's why we need somebody like you that that's uh uh running that that who who went to school and became an attorney and knows the rules and regulations. You have to know that that's why I 
I've been doing improvisational workshops forever to give everybody a voice, to connect, communicate, and collaborate. And that's what life is all about. That's what we all have to do with whatever it is that we're doing. Is we, we connect, we meet each other. Then we start, hey, hey, what football team do you like? What baseball team do you like? You know, oh, what's your favorite kind of makeup? Oh, yeah, I love the way you put that eyeshadow on the, in the corners of your eyes, and it makes your eyes look bigger. And, you know, all that kind of stuff is the arts. Why it's so important is, is there's the celebration of our cultures, whatever, wherever we come from. And especially with ours, the Mexican-American culture and the Mexican culture that, that is so powerful that we need to celebrate and know, hey, we're all the same. Doesn't make any, whether you, you make a uh, hundred dollars a week or a million dollars a week, we're all the same. And speaking of culture, Mr. Sedna, do you think his Hispanic representation in film and movies has gotten better since you've started? Or is it the same or is it getting worse? You know, that, that's the question that has been, uh, I got here in 1969 and, and it was always, oh, this is the decade of the Hispanic. Now, finally, we're going to every, every, every 10 years. Yeah. We had to wait 10 years. We had to say it's the decade of the Hispanic and it never happened. It's always been the same, but finally with shows like the one that I'm in and, and other shows, uh, uh, gentified and the Mayans and there's so many things that are going to be coming up and that's the important part with with our show that is so good so well written uh, uh, that it's going to have uh, that's going to triumph because of the subject matter that that it finally is here it's going to make a difference now but we have to support the shows and let the people know that that we're watching and not only support the shows, but an important thing is if you watch with love, then you can Google IMDB, which is where all, where you can find out about who, the, what actors are in what movies, who are the producers, the writers, all that kind of information. But there, you can go to with love and, and rate it. And the higher rating you give, the better off it is. But you say, well, I'm, I, I don't have that much time. It doesn't take that much time to that's that's what you call voting right you're voting for something that you want because there are people out there that are giving it a one or a zero that brings the algorithm down because uh uh they don't they don't like the idea that there's uh even now even then it's going to be 2022 that a, a mixed race marriage oh that is just they just they they just can't can't stand that. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. But no, but to 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 what you're asking, yeah, it's, it's finally our, our time to to. Uh, and, and when I say our time, I mean everybody, all the cultures. Yeah, for us Latinos, but we're all in this together. I keep saying that because it's true. We have to bring everybody along with us. I mean, look at the Native Americans are still. Where are they? They, they're, 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 they're where we came from. We, we, we came from Aztlan. Aztlan is Texas and New Mexico, Arizona, where, where we came from Bering Straits. Now they're saying, hey, maybe we were created here and we went backwards. We went the other way from the Bering Straits, you know. But this is where we came from and in, into Mexico and into South America. Those are the cultures and the stories that we don't know. And that's why we need people like Sarah to go fight. For, for those simple things that we're not in the history books. They don't tell our story. They don't tell the story of, of all the, uh, our ancestors that not that long ago, just a little over a hundred years ago, were, were being hung there in the Valle. By the Texas Rangers, you know? yeah, the, the, yeah, the Texas it, Rangers. There's so much history that we, don't, that we don't know, and that's why our stories are so important to be told. Everybody's story, you know, because... Uh, if you get up at, at, at five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning to go go to work and, and you're not made, you can barely make it, you're a big success. You're getting up and going to work. And that's where I'm on my soapbox. But that's the youth of today 
are, are don't know uh, what it is to work. They don't know that the, 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 the passion that you get from working and, and, and why that's so important is like, oh, I don't feel so good. I'm just going to call in sick. No, you can't call in sick. You can't call in sick because you have to go. You have to, of course, if you're really sick, you have to be, of course, you're going to call in sick, but not for a you know, toothache or just the minor things. You have to, you know, I, I, I'm going to tell you that with my motivation that I always do with the kids, I say, okay, you're working in a fast food restaurant and you, you punch out at five o'clock and you're walking out the door and you see that somebody spilled a Coke. So you cl- you stop and you clean it up so that nobody's going to slip. Right. So you clean it up and you don't, you don't look around to see if the manager or anybody is looking at you to see, Hey, look, look what I did. Look, look, I'm doing something good. No. When you do something good, that's for you. That's your muscle. That's your fortitude. That's your moral fortitude. That's who you are as a human being. Nobody has to know about it because you know about it. And that's that's the, the important thing. I, I can't, I got to go back to the voting, to why it's important for us to show up and 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 have our voice heard. It started off with, are, are we being represented are we being represented on film and TV? Uh, not nearly as much as we're going to be. And once again, that's why I have to go back to to Sarah and and what she's doing is that we need uh, the support uh, because what she's going to bring is not. It is is it is it Sarah? Because as Texans, we don't like to to brag about ourselves and say. Hey, Vote, vote for me or look, look, I, I, it's not about me. It's not about Sarah. Of course it is because we're the ones that have to stand up there and have the, the, the pulpit and, and, and speak out. So anyway, I'll let you, you know what really resonated with, with me, with what you're saying is, you know, you're talking about how, you know, you wake up and you push and you persevere and you fight regardless of, you know, if you feel bad that day or, and, you know, I think the reason is, is because, you know, you've had to break through all these barriers. You've had to work double hard to get to where you are. And it resonates with me as a woman in politics, especially um, in the Valley and arena that's been mostly male dominated. It's that sort of that same mentality. And it really, it, I really felt it when you're talking about it having to look, if I feel bad, you get up and you push, you, you don't want to do it, you push and you go, because you're having to work doubly hard because you're in a field that is dominated by by others that, you know, don't look like you or, you know, don't, um, are the opposite sex or of a, of a different um, background. Um, so, you know, you paved the way for the Chicanos and where it really opened all these doors. And I'm hoping that I can follow suit um, here in the Valley regarding young women. I mean, never in all of history, and I'm talking about all of history, have we had a female senator out of our district? I mean, if we if we can persevere and push through this barrier, and break that glass ceiling, um, then I just feel like, little girls and young women all over the valley will have this hope you know say you know what she did it i can do it or you know i can be the next senator i can be the next president whatever it may be um you know i got three little kids and two of them are little girls and i feel like if there's anything that i could do to set them up for their future it's instilling that confidence that it can be done so i love i love what you said and i think that you're right on right on the money on that well well yeah. sarah you have like mr sedna is like the obi-wan kenobi of lifting people up i mean you've you've lifted up so many people mr sedna like looking at some of the people that started their careers like with you and became big stars with your like input like like j-lo um eva longoria i i mean i mean sarah you got some big some some pretty big shoes to fill <laughs> what are you saying yeah. i'm not the next j-lo <laughs> <laughs> i've never yeah. seen you dance <laughs> well you know you know something that's interesting 16 years ago i was in edinburgh at with a uh, pan am through gear up 
they brought me in to do my one man show at El Ruco Chuco Cholo Pachuco. And do you know, I, I, I don't think people realize because I didn't know this, but 16 years ago, there were more women who had their PhDs and women working on their PhDs right there in the Valle, more than anywhere else in the country. I'd never, I'd never run into that. And that was 16 years ago. I haven't been back uh, to, to know what the statistics are now, but that's probably- hey, Mr. Sergeant, you grew up in, uh, in South Texas, right? Yeah, Corpus Christi. I was born at the Corpus Christi Naval Base. And and growing up in South Texas, we're used to the, the typical male Mexican machismo, a woman needs to be put in her place type stuff. And especially like growing up in the 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 era say it. Go, that, go ahead and say it, the last millennium. Yeah, <laughs> that you were growing up in. What made you develop your your views like towards women? Because I'm I'm pretty sure that you had other people around you that didn't think like you. What what brought about your um, your I guess this view of equality? Well, my my first storyteller was my great grandmother. Who, who was uh, my mother's grandmother. And she was a great storyteller. And she lived, uh, she lived right in, in, in uh, Rio Bravo, right across the border, uh, Rio, uh, Rio Bravo. And, and, and a funny story is that has nothing to do with what you just asked, but she gave us a horse when we were kids. And so we were growing up and we had this horse, you know, and we finally, after about five or six years, we, we went down, then crossed the border to Rio Bravo, and we're driving down, and Tio Napoleon had a, a, a big ranch down there. And then she says, ahí está tu caballo. <laughs> and you know the, what the horse's name was? Castaño que te engaño. It's, it's a chestnut, but I'm just kidding. You know, but for us, she gave us this horse. We had a horse, you know, even though we, and now we get to see it, but it's only at a distance. But that's 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 what a storyteller is, and that's what somebody that we can't that if we don't touch Sarah, we don't have somebody like her, you know. But growing up, it wasn't. I mean, most of the 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 guys that I grew up with, with the, the Chicanos that I grew up with, we were in we were in young men's clubs. We were all kind of grew up there, and and I'm I I, I was born in the forties, uh, in the fifties and sixties. With respecting women, we we had, uh, but it was still, you know, that that macho thing. But I was the only Chicano in the Young Lions club at Del Mar College when I was going there. But I was the president because I was I was an actor, and I was I never I knew that it was all BS, all this prejudice and racial stuff. But just because you know it, I I could fight through it because. I had the confidence and 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 could could uh, defend myself. I could speak out for myself. But most of the people don't have the 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 time or or uh, wherewithal to to do that. And that's where we need somebody like Sarah. I want to keep going back to that. Is why that is so important. Why I'm here today is is in in, in supporting her and women in general you know, all to, to appreciate what we have in, in our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, you know, our nieces, any, any female. And, and when you go, our waitresses, you know, how, oh, you didn't, I asked for all of eggs over easy and these, these eggs are hard, you know. Mm-hmm. No, hey, be, be human, you know. Excuse me, but uh, these eggs uh, didn't quite turn out. Is there a way you can get, <laughs> sure, they'll take the eggs back. It's just, it's treat everybody as if though uh, like you want to be treated. Isn't that what the Bible says? Do unto others, you know, but if we really want do unto others, we need a voice like Sarah's out there to, to, uh, to Sarah, I want to ask you, how did you 
Uh, who was who were your your uh, who were the women in your life that gave you that confidence and how did you get yourself to school and all those things? Uh, you're successful now, but it, it wasn't handed to you on a silver platter. Yeah, no, it definitely wasn't easily. Um, luckily for me, you know, I had the I had a really good strong mother. Actually, I'm in my mother's house right now, so she's still very supportive with everything that I do. Um, but you know, it wasn't always easy there. I have definitely stumbled and fallen throughout the journey, but I think because of that, you know, stumbling, I've really been able to come out on the other side of it. You know, for example, when I was, I guess, 10 years ago or so, um, I was a single mom. I was, you know, working full time, trying to get my two year old through school. I mean, it was just a really difficult point in my life. Um, in the middle of the night, I, I am asleep and I smell fire um, in my house and I, you know, jump out of bed and I've got my room, a hallway, and then my two-year-old baby's nursery. And there's a fire right between our two rooms. Um, and, you know, I was there by myself, single mom, but I was able to run to the kitchen, get the fire extinguisher put it out and get my baby to safety. But I remember at that point in time thinking, you know what? Um, this could have turned out um, tragically and luckily it didn't. But at that point in my life, I said, okay, this is a major struggle th th that I had um, and an incident that could have turned out really, really bad, but I was lucky and I was able to pull myself out of, this house and get myself in a better situation. But I, I'm a young female that had an education. Now I think about other women from the Valley um, that don't have everything that I had to pull me out of that situation, that don't have an education, that didn't have a supportive family. Um, and I realized then that, you know, the system is not set up for single moms. The system is not set up um, for people without educations. It's really set up to just be a barrier and a hindrance one after the other um you know so with that being said i've had i've had my struggles but i feel like because of them i'm able to relate more um, with people that are going through a through a rough time so i wouldn't change those incidences for for anything and um yeah i've had a lot of positive examples in my life to to, to follow. So I'm real grateful towards for that. The, the metaphor for me in, 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 in that story is, is the fire extinguisher. Do you remember how it was that you got that fire extinguisher into your house? Because without that lesson, you would have, and, and to be able to have the, 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 the presence of mind to know, okay, get the fire extinguisher, you can put it out. How did you get that fire extinguisher? Was it a, in school? Did you have the firemen come to class or anything like that? You know, I, I don't remember. I know that when I woke up, my first instinct was to run to the kitchen. And I knew that there was a fire extinguisher under the sink. Now, I didn't know if it worked. <laughs> I didn't know if it was functional. But I knew it was there. So that was the initial reaction to go grab it and put out this fire um, but, you know, if it wasn't there, the second choice would to, would have been to jump through the fire and then figure out how to, you know, break through a window. I mean, you know, it's 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 these struggles, I think, that that people encounter in their life. Um, but, you know, from that incident, you know, I had never in my life thought about running for office. But I remember after that incident, really doing some soul searching and thinking, gosh, like, you know, I'm. I'm an educated person and I'm still having, you know, to struggle with all sorts of hard stuff right now. Um, so that sort of, I think ignited sort of a fire under me, like, okay, like, you know, you're from the Valley, you know, 37 years later, people are still selling chicken plates on the corner because they can't afford health care. We're still the last in education, you know? And so it's, yeah, it's, it's enough. It's time. Well, what impresses me so much about your story, Sarah, and Mr. Suddenly, you should know this, that being a lawyer, the way you handled that fire, because most lawyers, before they put out the fire, they would think, okay, what's my policy limit? 
and how much money can I get if this thing burns down? So that is a, a, a yeah. just a testimony to your your good character. You said I'm putting out the fire. Most lawyers they would have claimed uh, the burnt Rolex. <laughs> so so awesome, Sarah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if I had a Rolex at that point in my life, um, that would be a whole other issue. But no, this is like you know a small, very you know a house that was barely put together, an old you know old um, electricity. Every time I would turn the water, you'd feel a spark. I mean, this was a rougher, rougher time. Um, but you know, here we all are, so it worked out fine. And Sarah, what's your favorite? Pepe said in a movie. You know what? The one that it, that reaches out to me the most, just because I was actually with Pepe when I saw it. He had, um, I don't know, what do you call it? Like a, a viewing, right? There was yes, a viewing. The, uh, South Texas premiere. Yeah, the South Texas premiere. And so Ricardo and I drove up to Kingsville and we watched The Man from Reno. And it was, to me, it was extremely special um, because we got to be with Pepe, we got to be with the family and watch this movie together. So that was really super, super cool. And 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 an aside to that is that not too many people from Corpus came down because we had a terrible weather, the rain, and for them to come down from the Valle to Kingsville said a lot. So they will, Sarah will go through through uh, fires and and storms to get to uh <laughs> to us uh and but uh, just a, a, another thing in the side because we're talking about the, the the power of women and the importance of it is that i don't we're not here to say hey men are, are terrible not at all i mean you know there's uh we're we're it's a it's a different age and and we're all in this together so it, it's uh uh, and the one question you introduced the gentleman there uh, to your your right there, Evan. It, you 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 uh, introduced him as a and Hefe. Maybe the people out there know, but but who is the Hefe for, for me? Huh? Oh, so I can uh, oh, understand who that gentleman. El is. Hefe, yes, right here is my dad, and, <laughs> and he is one of your biggest I'm biggest a, fans. I'm a fan of you, sir. I think uh, and, you uh, and so you, was you he the one point? that lit the fire on un, uh, under you to to get your education and all the time go out there <laughs> every day. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he would put on Miami Vice and uh, which he was on, by the way. Yeah, you were on yeah. Miami Vice. I remember yeah. seeing seeing you on Miami Vice. Yes, Sarah, I don't want to put you on the spot or anything like that put me on the spot but i am put her on the and spot. mr sedna this one's for you buddy sarah what do you think of zoot suits <laughs> i think they are classic i think that i should go buy my husband one as soon as immediately as i leave here that's where i'm headed for my first zoot suit now uh now, Mr. Senator, you are, or I would consider you the, uh, the, the expert on zoot suits. Um, can, can, wem, can women wear zoot suits? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Of course women can wear they zoot suits. They probably look at better. You know? They probably look better yeah. in them. <laughs> yeah, they look better in them. Is that what he said? Yes. I didn't hear him too good. Yeah, yeah. They, but they probably they do. I, I, I swear of that. I've seen them, women wear men's pants that look better on them than me. Yeah. Like wow, yeah. it looked nice in them. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's um, the zoot suit era. That's why I created my my one man show at Ruco Chuco Cholo Pachuco was that he gets railroaded because I was in the original play zoot suit. I didn't do the movie, but um, but I created this so that all my imaginary offspring all went to prison. And everybody else says, hey, the, the only way out is education. The only way out is education. But through improv, yes. and, and I like to turn things around, it's not the only way out. It's the only way in is education. So the only way in to a new way of thinking is to, to, to buy into it. Do you want to close this out? 
Um, yeah, sure. Well, I just wanted to say, first and foremost, thank you so much for, well, to, to F and Dad for this platform. I mean, this is really great. And then to Pepe for, you know, you have so much going on in your life. Um, you you took, a, took an hour to be here with me and to support me. Um, and those things are, are will never be forgotten. I mean, it really did mean the world for me. Um, to the listeners out there, reach out to me if you have questions or need to know more. Um, call me, email me, text me, and um, I'll be more than happy to meet up, talk to you, whatever it may be. Ask me the hard questions. Put me on the spot like F, and we'll be we'll be good to go. And also tell them to check out Pepe Sedna's version of Jingle Bells. Yeah. <laughs> Most importantly, right, yes. Right now, yeah, that's uh, – <laughs> and uh, I, I wish we had the subtitles because, uh, yeah, my Jingle Bells is uh, very important. Uh, and it's it's – uh, how, how in the world – I mean, I'm just going to go, how in the world – and I, I have family members that are that are. I hate to say it, I'm not I'm not going to say it. But how in the world did he ever come in to power when everybody saw what who he is? I mean, it's so obvious. Really, is it that important? I mean, is it? It's. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. But anyway. Uh, let's get out there. Let's get the the army out there. And, and hey, and 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 for those of you that 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 are are uh, campaigning uh, against Sarah for the same seat, more power to you. And, and God bless everybody who's out there, man. And 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 uh, uh, let's make sure that 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 we get who we want in there. And there's a lot more of us than there are of them. Like. He was saying those eight percent. We're part of the eight percent people. Can you believe it? I mean, that doesn't make sense. I I don't want to vote. What what have they done for me? You know, no. It's just it's just not about it's it's about your kids, your grandkids, the future. We and need that, that education. We that need. Amazon Prime show with love. That title is like resonating with me right now because that that title to that show also symbolizes the way you, the way you've spent your career and the way you are you've handled your life with love and you've been yeah. successful well i got so, so let me tell you my second day in hollywood they took me to my wife's store and six months later she came to one of my shows and i was homeless for part of the time but i would clean up at the theater but she took me in and didn't get me to didn't say, hey, go get a job. She supported me at, for, for the next eight months. And then after that, uh, she's always been with me. We didn't she had a son that her parents raised. So we were always together. So in 53 years in March, we will have been together 53 years in March. Wow. And we've only congratulations. Been apart 20 days. Yeah. We've only been apart 20 days. You know why? Why? Por, porque le tengo un miedo. <laughs> <laughs> women, women have to be strong. And, and I know I was at a boxing event in Kingsville. And I was saying, okay, women, you, you know, your boxer, you got to be strong with them because uh, men have a tendency to be dogs. You know, we will go looking for that fire hydrant. <laughs> and we need a good dog catcher out there to pull our chain and say, sit. <laughs> and, and they came and they had been uh, drinking. They said, Hey man, we're gonna take away your man card. <laughs> you were upset with me, but I, it was just a, a, a cliche, you know, because it's not. We're all in this together, men, men, and and, and women. Uh, not everybody, you know. It, it's it's a it's a new time for for women to be in there, and why Sorry. people like Sarah, who especially that that have an education and 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 have a heart. That's that's a big thing that she's li willing to listen to to the the questions you have and ask her the hard questions. Test her, but we need that army out there, like como hormigas, 
You know, we thought we need those ants to be bringing it back to the hive, you know. And and right. if you don't have a, a, a dollar to spare, then then give us a a, a thousand dollars of your time, yeah. you know, yeah. to go out there and 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 and, uh, and and get people to vote. Get people to vote. I don't care who you vote for. I really don't care who you vote for. I just want you to vote. Of course, I, I do care who you vote right, for. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean the reality, if they do vote, it should be someone that likes donkeys, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we, want everybody, we want everybody to stay alive, even you jerks. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what? That, 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 would, that would be really good for us to cover real, real quick. If you and Sarah can d- discuss the um, the booster shots and the vaccines, because I'm down here, we're having a big problem with the old school Hispanics who don't trust the government, and they're just like we're we're not getting vaccinated. And um, I think some and encouraging words by you guys. They don't trust it because uh, of the politicians, and and, and they say. The difference between, you know, Fox News is just one station, but the Republicans all have the same message. Democrats have a lot of different messages. So they say if you hear something seven times in a row, then you start to believe it. And that's why people are believing what they're hearing. But I'm going to leave that in, in Sarah's hands to talk about about all of that because they, I'm in I'm in your wheelhouse now and this is where you live so let the people know where they can go or what why it's so important yeah I mean I think it's clear in the past year and a half two years um, I feel like we can all agree that we've known at least on a personal level more people that have died than I have my entire life combined I mean the numbers are just staggering right um, and then you hear these stories from from doctors and from from frontline workers who are saying, you know, we get people that are admitted to the hospital and they're asking for the for the vaccine, but it's too late. Um, and those are just, I mean, heart wrenching stories because people are dying that maybe had just been misunder- misinformed or watched the wrong news station, right? Um, and the vaccine is very easy to get. I mean, go down to your local Target, to your local Walgreens. You can make an appointment online, call them and, um, and get it. I mean, I know personally when, when I got it, I just felt so much more secure um, just in my day-to-day life and, and felt better for my kids. And um, so just, um, yeah, if, if you feel like there's something there was something wrong with a vaccine or that, you know, there's conspiracy or whatever, just take this challenge. The challenge is research the other side of it. Look at both sides and then make an informed decision. Um, but don't just look at, at one side of the issue. Yeah. Don't go to the same source for, for uh, the research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, fa- I mean, Mr. Said, you're, you're saying Facebook's not a reliable source. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, that's why reading is so important. Is uh, uh, you have to get it from different sources and read yeah. uh, different publications. You know. Okay. Well, well, thank you so much for for joining us. Uh, uh, this episode should should be up uh, probably next Monday. You just got to do some uh, like editing, bells and whistles. Maybe throw in the uh, the trailer to with love, and uh, yeah, and maybe the documentary. Oh, is there a link or? Um... I, I, I I sent uh, Ricardo uh, the scan to my QR code. Uh-huh. So I think if you just scan that, the trailer pops up. Oh, okay. Uh, we're premiering it here in Palm Springs on January the seventh and the fifteenth. Yeah, and, and it's uh, the story of of my life since I was uh, three years old. Wow! And I'm gonna uh, nice. uh, uh, a spoiler alert <laughs> in my book and my documentary is one of the first pictures that comes up. Now people are gonna start then worrying about me, but but I'm dressed as a little girl when I'm around three or four years old. One of my first performances, you know. So, uh, but don't forget, I was a, 
uh, just a, a quick aside how things go. In high school, my older brother was taught us how to fight since we were real little, and he was a real tough guy. But because he was, I didn't have to be. And and uh, so I, when I was in high school, I was in the production there at the college of Oklahoma, and I was in the ballet sequence because so, I liked to dance, and they put me in. And so I was always you know, in the hallways, hey, ballerina, ballerina, hey, ballerina. So it was always, you know, trying to, you know, get my goat, right? So that was on Friday, I was still being called ballerina. Friday and Saturday night, I had my boxing matches and I won the Golden Glove Championship. So I came back on Monday and I was champ. Uh On Friday, I was ballerina and on Monday, I was champ. And little so, did they know that the ballet probably helped you with your championship. Oh, yeah. you got to know how to move, you know, <laughs> get away from those punches, you know. <laughs> but but let's see. I, I want to see uh, how can we keep a, a, a score of how many people can come on to, to you. Uh, just just do me a favor. Anybody that's new that hasn't, just just donate $1 to start off with in, into the campaign. And 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 you saying hey that you'll tell uh, w- one person uh, the 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 thing with the the I love the word the exponential and the, for the people that don't know it because I just learned it not not that many years ago exponentially means that it was the old story that you've heard of that if you take a penny and you double it every day do you know that story mm-hmm. if you take the amount if you start off with a penny. And you double it every day for 31 days. You double the amount. It goes from oh, one yeah. penny, two pennies, four pennies, eight pennies, 16, 32, 64, Exponential. 126. That, you know how much you get at the end of 31 days? $10 million. $10 million if you start with a penny and you double it every day. And they say, hey, wait, you can't double a penny every day because they're just thinking of a penny. But exponentially, if one person tells two people, and then those two people tell another two people, then they got four. And if those people tell two people, then it starts. Then that's how we start getting our base. Yeah. And, and let's grow exponentially. Let's see how we can start a new movement down there uh, to get to to get this not only Sarah elected, but get the rest of the people and the rest of the things that you need in your community. In your neighborhood, not just, and in your high schools and in your elementaries, why is it that only those with the rich ones get it? And I'm not just talking about the, the rich gringos, because we're all gringos. Uh, uh, I'm going to leave you. Uh, if you got another um, two minutes, yeah, I'm going to do one of them for my one man show. This is my character. I'm going to leave you with, and I'll let you know what it's about. Kapataya yippee, kapataya yo. My name is Bubba Joe Jr. Sanchez, and I am a rootin', tootin', straight shootin' son of a gun. I am a triple threat icon. I am a Tex icon, Mex icon, a Mer icon. It's the Mexican millionaire's millennium. I am rich, and I want to help get you all out of the poorhouse. Rich people, we say, I made it happen. I made it happen. Poor people, they say, what happens, happens. It's meant to be. Look at Kitty the Oz. Whatever God wills, well, my God told me in no uncertain terms that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Amigos, I'm here to inspire you, immigrantes, estudiantes, profesionales, to learn to speak, read, and write in English, Espanol, English, and Spanish. Because in order to beat the gringo at bingo, you got to learn the lingo. Comprende le So... So then I tell the kids, who are the gringos? You know, that white guy that, no, no, we are. All of us are gringos. We're here in gringo land. We're the gringos. And what is the, in order to beat the gringo at bingo, what's the bingo? The bingo is what you love to do. If you're an electrician, if you're a plumber, you like to fix carburetors uh, and motorcycles, that's your bingo. Now, what's the lingo? The lingo is the education that you have to give yourself to learn how to Fix that. Whatever it is that you need fixing. Now, if you know how to read, you can Google it. 
and find out how to do it. But you have to be able to read to understand what it is that, that, that you need to do. And it's not for anybody. It's for you. It's not for your mother, your, your teachers. It's your information. So remember, in order to beat the gringo at bingo, we got to learn the lingo. And in order to get Sarah Stapleton in there, uh, we got we to gotta vote. So let's see how many uh, people we can get on the bandwagon. And if you haven't got a dollar, just uh, lend, lend your name and say, hey, I'll, I'll spend a weekend uh, distributing flyers at, at the mall. And, yeah, and call me or that. come with me to a function. We can all wear T-shirts and go to a party together. Hey, that's good. Uh, young ladies, especially out there, and the young men. Oh, this is good. The young ladies, the obvious reasons, but the young men, uh, the best place, I'm going to give you guys a great secret. We're going to have a new army of, of, of uh, young ladies out there. And if you want to meet some real smart young ladies, come over and join uh, Sarah's group because you'll get to meet some real smart girls that are going to help you. They'll help you with your homework. Oh, darling. <laughs> we all need help with our homework. <laughs> <laughs> They'll teach you how to iron your own shirt and your own jeans and your own chones. They'll teach you how to do it all by yourself. And you can wash your clothes and dry your clothes all by yourself. Oh, my. You can put the soap in the little container. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. But, but Well, thank you guys for joining us. And when you're in town. Mr. Serena, definitely stop by me uh, and we can have uh, um, dinner with the army. Yeah, and I have a good friend down there that, that that's getting over uh, uh, a sickness, uh, Gilbert Ramos, who is one of my producers on on um, uh, Man from Reno that they, they went to see. Uh, and I wish him the uh, great health. And, and he was he was fighting COVID. And he he was in there for four months. And, and um, you know, it's, it's just uh, we're all and, you know, we've got to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. And, and by the way, has anybody ever told you you look uh, like Jesse Borrego? You know, Jesse Borrego, the actor? Actually, yes, I've heard of him. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, just from your profile there, you. You have a little bit of that Jesse Borrego thing going on. Oh, the, you know, blood in, blood out. Oh, yes. He lives in thank, San Antonio. Thank you, Mr. Anyway. Sergeant. Yeah, you, you know, it's, so, it's that Aztec blood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Emerald Toiba. T-O-U-I-B-A. Check her out. Emerald. And, and if you see uh, With Love, go on IMDb and vote for us so that we can get our show, we can get a second season so that more shows can follow. Oh yeah, we 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 definitely need a second season. I was watching that's it why, last night. It's good yeah, stuff. That's why we need uh, uh, Sarah in there so that we can get a second season of more. Shoko, that'd be one. Then we'll have two more, and the next time it can even be a young Chicano and a Chicana, and then the next time there'll be four. And pretty soon it's it's gonna be. Uh, we need the army. Let's yeah, go. I mean, I was watch, watching watching. With love, and I'm like, it takes place where in Oregon? Yeah, yeah. Season two should Oregon. be in Texas. Season two, bring it to Texas, Sarah. Well, well, well <laughs> she, she, the the creator is from Portland, Oregon. Oh, She's in Cuba. It's okay. Cubana. And she was a showrunner in one day at a time. But we have our stories, and I have my one man show. That that, and I I had it there in McAllen too with the, at the, uh, with the Pedro Garcia who's down there in the valley, who does a lot of children's theater. So, uh, Pedro, if anybody knows Pedro Garcia, that, that does all the theater down there, uh, get the word out there because he does great. He's a great actor and, and has great shows, the performances that he puts out there. Yeah, the, the first time that I saw you live was your Zoot Suit show. Oh, you did see yeah, that live? Yeah, at, uh, at, at Cinema... Del Rey, there in McAllen. Oh, you did see it there. Well, that's Pedro Garcia that put that on. Yeah, that brought me down it, it, and put up the money for that. It so. was a, a great show, but what what made it even better though was after the show, you met with everybody, like you were shaking hands, giving oh, out yeah. like autographs. That was just so, so awesome. Okay, well, everybody, go out and shake hands with Sarah, and we'll <laughs> see you next time around. All right, thank you guys. 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.